Ladies and gentlemen, this is an article that came from one of my subscribers. I'm just going to call you JG. And this is really significant because we know many of the EMTs and fire department and police officers that carry Narcan. In so many cases, they are going out to the same person that's overdosing multiple times in one week. How many times must we save people who overdose? And this came out July 16th, 2018. And this article came out on uh, a website called theday.com. And I'll leave the link to this article in the description box. A deeply humane friend recently suggests that medics stop saving people on their third opioid overdose. Now, we had heard this from an Ohio uh, city councilman. He came under fire making that suggestion. So now it's coming up again. The subject was naloxone, a medication that can yank users from the jaws of death. It can be given via Narcan, nasal spray, or injection. My friend surprised me. I thought that if a life could be easily and cheaply salvaged, a Narcan kit cost about $40, why not do it? I do hear the arguments. Addicts usually have brought their problems on themselves, and especially in the opioid uh, plague. You know, many of these people went to their doctors, got massive amounts of opioids. They were getting prescribed um, like 400 and 500 pills at a time, where if you were um, someone of color, a black person, and you went to the doctor, they wouldn't give you anything beyond a week. So, you know, they were doing a lot of discriminatory practices, and I'm sure it still goes on, and how they even gave out the medication. And that's why the white community is so heavily impacted, because they got the pills very freely. So it, it is a hell of a difference in how the crack epidemic started with this government dropping the drugs in the Black community, and how they freely went to their doctors and got these pills. It's a big difference. Keeping this rescue drug handy gives them an excuse not to seek treatment and something few say out loud. These addicts are drags on society and their departure would be no great loss. Okay, so this is what this person is saying after having a conversation with their friend about only going out three times to bring these people back with Narcan. Wow. Arthur Kaplan, who heads the medical ethics program at the New York University School of Medicine, doesn't go there at all. The revival drug should be around everywhere, he told me. Around all events. If you have an addict in your family, you should stock a kit. Agreed, but the naloxone dilemma doesn't stop here. Public libraries have been urged to keep Narcan handy because many users head to their bathrooms to take drugs. And, and in fact, ladies and gentlemen, public bathrooms all around the country that's what's happening in these bathrooms. You know, I, I usually don't go to public bathrooms. I mean, it would take a lot for me to go to a public bathroom. You know, I'm, I would have to desperately have to go. I usually will hold out until I get home. Many libraries fear becoming hangouts for addicts who believe they found a place to both take drugs and be saved 
in case of an overdose. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's the biggest reason why many of these addicts overdose out in public because they're hoping that somebody will see them and save them. That's why they do it. That's why they are really a public nuisance. But, you know, of course, they're labeling it a public health issue and not a crime. But it, it's amazing how these people can do illegal drugs out in public, overdose out in public, and it's not seen as a crime. But during the crack epidemic, it was seen as a crime. Stock Narcan anyway, Kaplan says. I don't see why we don't use it as a defibrillator. Well, because people that have heart problems didn't go out and get that. You know, that is something that develops over time. And sometimes they need defibrillators because those heart problems are inherited in their family. So it's not really a good comparison when you use defibrillators and trying to compare that to the opioid epidemic. Defibrillators are devices that restore an abnormal heartbeat and are now commonly kept on airplanes and shopping malls and wherever people congregate. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think defibrillators and Narcan have anything to do with each other, but okay. Obesity, untreated, diabetes, and smoking are all tied to behavior, but the medical community continues to treat the consequences, Kaplan notes. If you clean out all the centers from the healthcare system, things would be cheap. So he's trying to compare all of these other conditions to drug addiction. And I'm sorry, the comparisons are falling flat, but let's go on. As for using public restrooms to do drugs, that's a worry shared by fast food restaurants and other establishments. The remedy for these locations to keep key to the bathrooms and monitor their use. The Narcan question is easy next to one facing hospital cardiac units. Drug use leading to bacterial infection ravages hearts. The cost of treating, okay, so they're talking about heart treatment. I'm getting away from that. The opioid plague has burdened hospitals with an avalanche of drug related. Okay, so, you know, I'm not surprised that you know, the drugs are leading to heart infections. But let me tell you something. I did a story on this on my first channel. How now there are people as young as 18 that need heart valve replacement and in their 20s because of all the drug use. Now, usually people don't get heart valve replacement until they're like in their 60s. But now, because of all the heavy drug use, it's not unusual for a lot of these young people to be seeing cardiologists. And they now need things for their hearts that they really shouldn't need until they're a lot older. So, you know, that's what's going on. And I remember doing a video on that a long time ago. Okay. Boston hospitals found that 7% of endocarditis, endocarditis patients who continue to do drugs lasted a decade without a returned infection. Some doctors hesitate sending them home with IV lines for treatment out of concern they will use them to inject illegal drugs. Okay. So, you know, it, it's common sense to know that drug use is always going to lead to other health problems. I mean, you see the rise in HIV that's going on, especially in the rural areas. 
You have the hepatitis A, B, and C that's going on because of all the drug use and all kinds of skin infections and conditions because of all the injections. People are infecting their skin. Um, you know, these things are going to happen. Drug use <coughs> is tied to so many other health, health conditions. And you see with meth, meth, now people are getting holes in their brains from the meth and getting all kinds of damaged brain tissue. So when you are a drug addict, those things are going to happen. And I have even seen people get off of drugs and they get completely clean, but because the drugs have done so much damage to their bodies in like 10 years, they will die. I've seen that too. I've seen that. You know, um, in fact, I knew someone, they got off of drugs in their 40s. They got clean. By the time they got in their 50s, they were gone. The damage was already done to their bodies, even after cleaning up. I mean, what they're doing to themselves, this is permanent. This is not going to go away. Finally, hospitals must ensure the patients are in drug rehabilitation program before releasing them. Well-run rehab centers now have excellent medication for those determined to kick the habit. So they use a drug to get you off of a drug, methadone. And see, Russia, this is why Russia said that doesn't make any sense. They need to go cold turkey and get off the drugs. Now, if you're a drug addict in Russia, you go on cold turkey. The only thing they give you in rehab are some aspirin if you need aspirin. That's about it. Those who, who, those who are not so determined will die before their time. Revival drugs may just delay the date. One thing most of us can agree on is that drug rehab should flow like water. It should be everywhere. The rest of the argument, though necessary, is simply sad. So, you know, this Arthur Kaplan is for having Narcan all over the place and everybody continue to save these people and help them. That's his suggestion. And you know, according to this article, there's a growing consensus in the public after so many hits of Narcan with the same person to just cut them off the third time that they overdose. And these addicts are just a drag on society. So there are many out here who believe that as well. But please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I will see you in the next video. Peace, family.